everyone this is very quick video on how to use bulk api 2.0 with mulesoft as you already know salesforce best practice suggests that we should be using bulk api version 2 going forward instead of the bulk api 1 and it has a lot of advantages so in this video uh, what i'm going to do is i have this csv file uh, very simple csv file i have a last name mobile phone email and account id account id i have hard coded just to prove a concept and there are around total 1500 to 1500 one record considering header i uh, i have a header at the top row top row so last name mobile uh, i'm going to insert them as a contact so while you are creating a csv file one thing that we need to make sure is the name of the column should be exactly same as the api name of the field of the object which is we are trying to load which is a contact in our case so these are the four uh, four parameters now in mulesoft very simple i have http uh, listener http listener is listening on bulk insert path and uh, whatever the payload i am going to get in this case csv file i will submit that payload to create a job version 2 uh, which uh, and it will send a request to Salesforce. So I am sending whole payload as it is, which is a CSV file. I am not doing any transformation or anything. Operation is insert. Line ending is very important. Most of the time it's a CRLF. And if you go here and if you see here at the bottom, it says that line is CRLF. So this is the best way to know that what is the line ending. Another thing we need to make sure is the format of the CSV file should not be UTF-8 because I had a lot of problem there. And then after that, uh, once we submit the job, it is going to give us the job ID in the response. So whatever the payload I have, I am getting payload.id is the job ID. Just printing that, okay, what is the job ID I got here? Now what I'm doing is, once I submit the job, Salesforce would take some time. So I need to keep pulling Salesforce until and unless I get the response either failure or success so for that i have used until success component of mulesoft and using this job id i'm getting the job status and whatever the job status i get i'm setting up the variable from the payload saying what is the state and then i have a choice element if the state equals to as you can see here uh, if i go in this choice element if the state equals to job completed I will I will stop and I will just get, retrieve if it, there any failed record or something here. Now it is just for the proof of concept. But after this, you can have another step saying that okay, create a CSV file from those failed record. Same goes if the status is equals to fail. That also means that job is completed. And again here I am retrieving the failed record, but I am not writing in any CSV file. But let's assume that it's neither completed nor failed. That means it's still processing. So in the default, I'm simply logging a message say, okay, I'm going to raise an exception. So I'm going to raise an error. And once I raise an error, this whole flow would fail. What that means is it is not successful. So in until successful, I have a configuration here. I'm saying that I have to retry around 3600 times in the interval of five seconds. So really I'm trying to have a longer time to keep pulling for the Salesforce result. And once I get a result, I'm I'm logging that result and saying that, okay, all done. And whatever the response is coming from the Salesforce, I'm going to print it, even though it would not make sense, but it will prove the concept that how the bulk API two works with Salesforce. So very quick summarization, you create a request, you get the status, and you keep getting the status until it's either completed or failed. And if it's completed or failed, you can read the failed result as well. There are some other connect connectors as well. So if you go on the Salesforce connector here, you see a lot of other connectors here. And if you search for bulk API 2, these are all the other connectors. You can definitely, right now in this demo, I'm inserting the record, but you can definitely retrieve the record, delete the record, or do any DML operation that you're trying to do. So let me start my project very quickly. So I am, okay, my project is already start. So I no need to start the project. All I have to do is just send the request now. So to send the request, I have my postman here. And in the postman app, I have a bulk insert URL. And I'm going in the body in binary. I'm selecting a file, the file which I was showing, number three file where account ID is hard coded and I'm going to send it. So once I send, if I go on the MuleSoft console, 
I should see prompt saying that it is still processing and uh, it is going to raise an exception. And if I go on copy this ID and if I go in Salesforce here, let's see what is going on here. So if I open here, it opens in the classic view. It shows me bulk API to job status. So if, as you can see, record process is around 800 record day process. So there are two steps. Once it accepts the file, which is completed, now it is processing the file and if I go on my MuleSoft server here, it says, okay, all done and it was able to create all the records and we can do simple SQL query basically on the account, on the contact basically that, okay, get all the contacts where the first name is equals to John. So I can simply open the developer console. And in the query editor, let me write a query contact where last name is like John and I'm going to execute it. As you can see, it's a 1501 count. And if you open our CSV file, it has 1502 row. First is header, so 1501 record. So that's the very simple example of how MuleSoft can be used. Again, it's a very simple. In the MuleSoft, all the component, all I have done is I have used my connector, which connects to my org number 29. Very easy, all you have to do is username and password. If I can show you quickly how it looks like in my case, I have a username, I have password, I don't have a security token because my profile IP address is whitelisted. So that's all, I think uh, it helpful for you and the detailed XML structure, what is the condition and everything you can find in my blog because I'm going to post this whole process in a detail in my blog so that if you want to understand how I'm comparing how I'm using some of the components you should be able to use it thanks for watching this video hope it's helpful and yeah please feel free to provide your feedback comment and don't forget to subscribe